So today I'm going to talk about emotion detection and modeling. We will also see a case study on the unrun emails. So this is the outline. I will start from the background and the basics of text mining. Then I will talk about the three steps in our emotion detection system, and then I will conclude. So uh, first of all, so this is a joint research between uh, Accenture. Uh, so uh, first, I want to give credit to my two advisors and the Accenture collaborator. Accenture, they were interested about financial security. So there are three major concerns. All of them are about people abusing their power and knowledge. So another aspect is that from the network analysis, we want to see the negative influences. We want to see who was the initiator of the negative uh, attitudes or emotions or an, uh, anything else. And so we want to also see the influence. Another thing is the, the outcome of the corruption. So uh, the, it always leads to bankruptcy and a tremendous financial losses. In many scenarios like the Iran, a number were convicted. But in many other cases, like the Lehman Brothers and other uh, cases in history, uh, no one was caught. So that's the reason we want to uh, discover suspicious behaviors in communications beforehand. So we would like to focus on test communications. It would be a test class classification problem, but there is always a thing that there is no annotated data. So we look at the Iran emails at, in that scenario. It was from a corporate scale. It was uh, resulted from the misdeeds. So that fits our needs requirements. And the problem still is that the emails, they were not labeled. So we don't know which email was specifically related to the misdeeds and the misconduct. However, we know the names of those who were convicted from the news. So we had a round of discussion to see how we should conduct analysis on a number of people there. And then we decide we should do em the emotion detection because it was related to the mental state, the same as the behaviors and actions. So that is the start of our research. We got a 22, the guilty from the news because they are, they, those are high ranked in a company in Enron corpora corporates. So we targeted on them and we also want to perform a fair comparison. That's the reason we select another 21 executives in an email. So there are 43 people of interest in total. Then it is about the text mining. We do classification, we could do classification for emotion to assign emotion labels. This, is a, this uh, slide shows a basic, some basic concepts of uh, text mining. So first, we extract numerical features from the unstructured text. The typical methods, they are bag of words and a work to vector. After that, we derive a feature document matrix. And then we input the matrix into machine learning for classification or regression. <clears throat> so then it is the <clears throat> typical, that, that slide was the typical machine learning based methods for emotion uh, for emotion detection, the the uh, the con is the con is that uh, it is supervised. It requires uh, training data, of course. Um, the another part is that uh, the result might not be interpretable. So some it is highly depends on the data. It's data driven. So sometimes it does not work on cross data on, on cross data sets. However. For the emotions, um, in our languages, we have emotion markers. For example, I say, I'm happy to talk here today, and the happy is a key lexicon here and indicates my emotion state. So that's uh, make the lexicon-based emotion detection possible and accurate. So that, but still there's our pros and cons. So first it is uh, the best uh, positive size. It is unsupervised, so we, we don't rely on data a training data, but still the problem is that uh, there could be complex structure, uh, grammar structures like uh, negations and other 
indirect expressions. The positive side is that the results is uh, highly interpretable. And so the performance is stable across data sets compared to the machine learning based methods. So then uh, we have some basic uh, understanding of text mining. And uh, then we have the data is the unranked emails, but still how many, uh, how many emotions we should detect from those, from the emails. So there are two aspects. The first one is the linguistic aspect. So the language is uh, highly representable from the for the emotions. So um, the state of the tool is the LIWC, the Linguist Linguistic Inquiry and Word Count, which is a software. So it is based on word frequency. Another aspect is the psychology part. Um, emotions are mental and it is, uh, uh, the most influential emotion psychologist is the Paul Ekman. Uh, he identified six emotions. So this is also the state of inner scope. Uh, These slides represent both the LIWC emotions and the Ekman's six emotions. Note that the gray color indicates the negative emotions here. So the problem is that we see an imbalanced uh, number of positive and negative emotions here, there are more numbers of negative emotions. So that is the reason we want to investigate in a balanced emotion category, categorization. So first of all, we, we don't want to go against the classics of uh, psychology and linguistic. Um, We're not experts, we want to stick to what they already have. So we want to we we fix uh, the number of negative emotions here, like anger, fear, sadness, disgust, and anxiety. Just to bring a little bit extra is that we introduce shame. We introduce that shame because that is a typical mental state uh, related to uh, mistakes, um, faults, and misdeeds. So that's the part of the interest, and so that's. Uh, how we fix the six negative emotions here. Then we want to uh, derive a best possible match counterpart for each of the negative emotions. So for example, uh, I don't like something, I dislike uh, angry and uh, so paired with uh, like the positive, the not the exact match, but the best possible match. Um, these uh, counterparts, they are uh, marked with color. So the warm colors, they are the negative emotions and the cool colors, they are positive ones. So that's how we derive the 12 emotion categorization. Also, we would want to also investigate on the strengths of emotions, which is the hedonicity. So we mark uh, the size, we use size of circles to mark the hedonicity in this chart. Uh, but the hedonicity here, it is not investigated in this work. So as a result, we have three emotion categorizations. The, from the linguistic aspect is the IIWC, which is uh, from the software based on the word frequency. The second is the psychology aspect from, for the Ekman's six emotions. So there is a data corpus, the effective text, the state of art. We use that and we use the gradient boosting regression to assign emotion, emotion scores for each, to each text. For the proposed the 12 emotion scheme, because we don't have any training data. So that's the reason we use a lexicon based method. And also we resolve imbalanced emotion classes. And so that's how, that's how we use the three categorizations for comparison. Then, for the 12 emotion scheme, um, we proposed a three-step detection method, which is we first annotated a core lexicon corpse uh, based on the LIWC uh, dictionaries. The second is that we derive a uh, synonym-based uh, search using based on from this core lexicons to derive an extended text, text, text lexicon course. We didn't merge these two together because we want to assign different priority to them. 
The last step is that we want to deal with uh, certain grammatical structures such as negation. Uh, for example, like uh, I'm not happy, we, we shouldn't know the ne negation in this uh, emotion state. So after that, we are able to detect uh, three categories of emotions. And so um, because uh, based on some prior psychological research, uh, humans are experiencing emotion cycles. Uh, for men, it is 23 days. For women, it is 28 days. So that's the reason we model these emotions from emails to daily emotion series, time series. So first, we aggregate uh, the emotions from emails as daily emotions. Uh, so there is a percentage of uh, all emotions. And this is example, this pie chart is an example of the LIWC four emotions. Uh, here, the, we also mark the dominant emotion as the prime. So here, the green, which is the positivity is the prime emotion in that day. After that, we derive a prime daily emotion time series. And then we model them with Markov chain analysis. So in this, uh, after we get the time series Markov chain, and we want to study the transitions. Here we define two metrics. One is the running time, which is defined as the number of uh, repetitions after the first occurrence, which is the three in this case. Another is the hitting times, which we define as the number of transitions till the first visit, which is four in this case. Um, there is another way to define this, uh, four as the running time and the three as the hitting time, just as an interval for this. And so, but it does not matter because we want to do a comparison for different people. And so it's a relative value that matters. So then we perform uh, this uh, running time and hitting time analysis for all 43 persons of interest. So this slide uh, shows the running times and the hitting times of the guilty and the non-guilty. Note that uh, NA here is the no emotion state. So the first chart is the IIWC's four emotions. We see that the negative emotions here, they share some patterns, but the positivity, it stands out differently. For the Ekman's six emotions, um, first, there is uh, no emotion, no no emotion state. Because uh, it is a regression model, it is data driven according to the training data, somehow it is always assigning an emotion score. Um, then we see that for uh, joy, uh, it appears uh, differently from positivity here. Um, then comparing to our 12 emotion categorization, we see that uh, this chart at the bottom shows a clear pattern for all emotions, only except the shame because there is no presence. So first of all, is that, um, we see more frequent transitions for the guilty. So which is uh, the longer, uh, with a shorter running time and a short, shorter hitting times. And the second is uh, the longer revisits for the non-guilty. So which is the dark blue bar across almost all emotions. The third is the longer duration of joy for the non-guilty. So here, uh, this is a bit contradicted to the Ekman's emotion, but the, I, I think the major reason is because here a joy is more aggregated towards all positive emotions. So after uh, the transition study, we turn to steady states. Uh, steady states, a steady state probability distribution would indicate uh, some sometimes personality. Some people are always being happy. They are optimistic and they are always happy. And sometimes uh, it could indicate mental health. So, like a, a person with depression, and uh, he always uh, she, he or she always sees everything as possibly unhappy. So, 
This slide investigated uh, the both uh, steady state distributions of the guilty and non-guilty. First is the LIWC's four emotions. So we, we only see a slight difference between the guilty and non-guilty. Second, for the Ekman's six emotions, we see some differences for fear and the guilty, they are inclined to be more fearful and to be less sadness, but uh, it is also data-driven. So the result is not guaranteed here to be accurate. It's not guaranteed to be accurate. So for the uh, 12 emotion scheme, we saw more differences here. So the first is that the guilty exhibit less emotional occurrence. So for the no emotion state, uh, it is a higher rate, a higher probability for the guilty. The second is that the guilty are less joyful, but more less joyful here, but more proud. And more content. The third is that the guilty experiences uh, less anger, less disgust, less fear, um, and more sadness. So these are for the negative states. Uh, then we come to stability. We want to see whose emotional states are more stable. So we use entropy rate for analysis as a metric. So here, because um, the entropy rate or the source information rate, it indicates that um, a higher, a higher source information rate indicates that it is less random, it is more stable, and a lower source information rate indicates that it is more random, it is less stable. So here in the entropy rating, we could see that uh, with the 12 emotion categorization, uh, there is a clear pattern that the guilty are less stable and the non-guilty are more stable with a higher entropy rate. So after that, because it is about uh, institute about uh, organization we have uh, many people there we want to do a ranking based on their emotional uh, behaviors and so uh, we conducted an emotion match between every two persons so this diagram shows uh, for the liwc's four emotions uh, so for each emotion between the every two pair of persons, uh, we, conduct, we conducted four emotional matches. Note that the no emotion state, we, we discard them. We didn't use them in this emotion match. And so it could also be scaled up to six emotions and 12 emotions similarly. Um, also, we use the Coley rating computation method uh, so if you watch soccer, uh, you should know that how teams are being rated or ranked in the games. And so it's, uh, it's a typical method. And so uh, we, we first, uh, we do the emotional match in this way. And we, when, then we do the quality rating based on the match results. So uh, in our experiment, note that uh, we, we are using a steady state probabilities for these matches. So this slide uh, shows the emotional rating between the guilty and the non-guilty. From here, we see that uh, the LIWC also shows that the non-guilty, they are uh, more likely to be ranked higher. Uh, for the Ekman six emotions, it is similar, but for the 12 emotions, we see a clear distribution of the rating between the two classes here. So the, the results for the rating indicates that uh, the guilty, they are less emotional in general. So once we do, uh, we did the rating, we could also do ranking. Um, so it's similar to the rating that uh, we could see the 
non-guilty, they are being ranked higher because they are more emotional. So the re result is similar to the ratings. To conclude, there are pros and cons for the less confessed method, of course. First is that um, it works uh, better on direct expressions and uh, paragraphs. Uh, for, paragraph, it, for paragraphs, it is because they are repetitions. So certain uh, minor indirect expressions are being overwritten and being overwritten by the large statistics. And so another part is that uh, we defined, redefined the 12 emotion categorization, and that is able to reveal uh, more psychological details. And also uh, we, we've seen distinct patterns for the guilty and non-guilty on the NREN emails. Some future work uh, not being done within this work is that the first is hedonicity. It could be addressed with some detailed annotation of uh, desk account dictionaries or annotated data with machine learning. The second is that the method could also be polished uh, with uh, the new advances of uh, GPT, the transformers, and uh, also with uh, more some annotated data for hybrid uh, detection. It could be more accurate. The third is that. Uh, the network analysis of emotion flows uh, was not addressed in this work and could be addressed in the future. So then it is uh, the application. So uh, this work was derived as, was concluded as a Python package. We expect it to be utilized for studies, um, depression, mental health, social media, et cetera. I hope it for we hope it could be uh, could bring insights for other studies. That's all. Thank you.